So in the previous video, we made this enemy go back and forth like that, basically. And in this video, we'll make it see the player stop and start performing a jump attack. It'll even flip towards the player. So the script for the video or the whole project is in the link in the description. There is a finished script as well, but please do follow the video so that you can understand how it is made. And while you're coming back to this video, smash the like button, hit subscribe. And with that said, let's get on with the video. Now, to make our enemy do a jump attack, we need an empty game object as a child of our enemy. And let's call it ground check. And then let's drag and drop it, I mean just move it, just below our enemy. Then let's give it a gizmo for now. Uh, let's say blue gizmo. So, what this does is it does the same thing as this does, basically. Let me just do this, yeah. We will create, uh, this time we won't create a circle, we'll create a square, and the square will be as big as our box collider, right? As big, not totally big, just wide as our box collider, and it will check for the ground. Now, you might be saying, why not use this? The reason why is, let me just go to the corner, and when we're at the corner, this will be like, yeah, we are not grounded. We don't want that, even though we are grounded. This only works for patrolling. For jumping, we're going to keep another ground check object. So, once we have done this here, let's go to our script. Then, here, below our patrolling variables, let me just copy this header and call it for jump attacking. Now, we need a jump height value for how high our enemy will jump. Then, because we want to jump towards our player, we need a reference to our player's transform. Now, we need a reference to our ground check that we made just now. Then, for the layer mask, it is also going to check the ground layer, so we don't have to do anything. But, instead of making a float, circle we need a vector tool which we'll call box size now just like here in this checking ground we need something a boolean called is grounded now first of all let's set up this like we have set up these two down here and we're going to write is grounded is equal to physics 2d dot overlap box and inside the bracket, we need a vector to point, which will be our ground check dot position. Then instead of radius, we need a vector to size, which will be our box size. Then we need an angle, just write zero for angle and a layer that we will check, which will be our ground layer. So now once we do that, let's go down here before our flip and let's make a function called jump attack. Now first of all we need to know how far and in which direction our player is. So write float distance from player and now here what we need to do is we need to subtract our position from our player's position meaning player dot position on the x-axis minus our position meaning transform dot position on the x-axis. Now this will give us how far our player is from our enemy as well as on which side our player is. That means if the value comes negative that means it's on the left side of our enemy otherwise if it comes positive that means it's on the right side of our enemy. Now down here write if is grounded that means if we are grounded then we will now jump. So, enemy rb dot add force and we need a vector to force. So, write new vector to and on the x axis it will be the distance from our player and on the y axis it will be our jump height. 
And because we don't want this force to be continuous, we are going to write force mode 2D dot impulse. Now, once we do that, our jump attack is done. So let's just call it for now. For now, we are not going to call it like this, but for now, uh, let me just comment this out. And here, write if, shit, if uh, input dot get key down, and the key code will be our space, then we will do a jump attack. So now, anytime I press the space key, it will first of all look how far and on which side our enemy is, I mean the player is, and then it will see if we are grounded or not. So if we are grounded, then it will do a jump attack. So let's just hit save, go back to Unity. Here we need to set up some value. Let's do that. So for our jump height, let's put 20 here. For the player, just drag and drop your player. For the ground check, drag and drop your ground check. And the box size, for now, let's just keep it 1 and 1. Right now, you don't see anything because down here, we have not set up our box, right? To show a box as a gizmo. So let's go down here. And for the color, let's put another color than blue because this needs to look different so that you can understand what's going on. So uh, let's call it green. All right, it'll be a green colored gizmo and it won't be a draw wire spear, but a gizmo dot draw cube. It will be a draw cube, which will mean it will draw a cube and the position will be our ground check position and the size will be our box size. So now once we do this, hit save, it will create a box as you can see, but the box is way big. So let's just set it up properly. On the X axis, let's just make it as big as our box collider right on the y-axis just keep it as 0.1 so now this box right here will check if you are grounded or not let me show you basically all right is grounded we'll see that for now uh let me not put a gizmo on it anymore because we don't need to show it so no gizmo in here let's go to the enemy yeah box now whenever i do this <laughs> I have to minimize on play so whenever I do this, I am touching the ground. So let me make it debug mode. Okay, ground touch is true. And checking ground is actually false because we're at the edge. Now, whenever I press the space key and let's see. All right, as you can see, our enemy jumped right on top of our player. Again, as you can see, yeah, it's happening. But sometime if you try, Sometimes it does not register the jump. The reason why is because we are using fixed update. Where did it go? Fixed update to put in inputs. You should never use fixed update for inputs. Fixed update should only be used for things like physics related things. Got it? Yeah, this jumping, basically we are adding a force that is related to physics. So that should be used in fixed update, but input, something like this, should never be used there. This is why you will have some kind of a problem. So, but we are not going to use this here, so nobody cares. But again, let me show you, it is performing a jump attack. So as you can see, it jumps right on top of our player. Now in actual game, what should happen is when we jump and it touches the player, the player will get some amount of damage and will be intangible for a while, which will make it easier for it to go down back and again do the jump attack, right? But here we have not set that up. That way, that's why that does not happen. But this works. But I want the enemy to actually flip, right? Whenever I'm here, I want it to flip. Yeah, so let's set up that as well. So the flipping function. So for that, all we need to do is just go down here and make a function called flip towards player. Now here, just copy this line of code. This will help us know the position, meaning either if the player is on the left side or the right side of the enemy, right? This just helps us do that. So let's just copy it and then just paste it down here. Then write if, now if our distance from player is actually less than zero, meaning let's not call it distance from player. Let's call it basically, uh, let me just rename it to basically, Player position, maybe? Yeah, let's just call it that so that it'll be easy. P L A Y E R P O S I O T I O. All right, we have to change it here as well. So, 
if the player's position is on the left of our enemy, right? And we are actually facing right, that means and, facing right. You can write it as facing right is equal to true, but if you just write it like this, it's totally fine. So if the player is on the left side, but you're facing right, then you will flip. Else if player position is actually greater than zero, meaning player is on the right side of our enemy, and we are actually not facing right, meaning we're facing left, then we will flip. Once we do that, now it will totally flip towards the player. So for now, let me just not call this anymore. And let's just call our flip towards player function. So once we do that, let's hit save. And this function is being called. All right, let's go back here. And what's going to happen is I have to do it like this. All right. OK, let me just move it around. So we're at the right. It's not flipping. Yeah, whenever I take it left of the player and if you're right, then it will flip. Otherwise, it won't flip. And this keeps on happening. So both of them are done. Now we need to implement these two functions, basically these two functions with our animation. No, no, not the petroleum. By the way. These two functions, our jump attack and flip towards player. So this is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And in the next video, which is the final video, we will be wrapping this up by implementing all of these functions with our animation. And finally, completing this video series. So with that said, if you like the video, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit subscribe for more content like this. And again, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye bye.